Hello everyone, Jewel here. Seeing that more people start enjoying roguelike games, I thought maybe this is the right time to update the best roguelike games that you should play in 2022. If you haven't watched the part 1 or 2, please watch it first, so you don't get confused why some games are not featured in this video. Alright then, let's get started. If you're a big fan of Quake or Doom, you may find some of that in RoboQuest with a bunch of RPG and roguelite elements. The map changes every time to keep the game fresh every time you play and the same can be said for the option to upgrade your weapons and character. RoboQuest offers 4 playable classes, each with its own unique abilities and distinct playstyles. Sure, the game is still on early access, but I can see the game becoming one of the best roguelite games once it is fully released. Played Up is a unique restaurant management experience, mixing roguelike elements into the genre that isn't quite popular nowadays. It requires a keen mind, good planning skills, excellent communication, and tenacity. You will earn money as you go, allowing you to unlock new upgrades to keep things running smoothly. If you manage to last the 15 days, you will unlock a new franchise where you can start all over again. Barony is a first-person roguelike RPG. If you love the old-school dungeon crawler, this game has the same energy, minus the turn-based mechanic. Despite using action mechanics, combat is still mostly methodical. You can swing, block, and even sneak. It's not every day that you find stealthy characters in roguelikes, but I found it both effective and gratifying here because of how well the stealth actually functions. Not only that, the game also provides a co-op experience so you can explore the dungeon together with your friends. <laughs> Little Noah Sign of Paradise is a game that combines the charm and gameplay hooks of a free-to-play mobile gacha adventure with the structures of roguelikes, monster collecting, and metroidvanias. The combat is enticing with its fast-paced action and a system that allows players to combine attacks and spells for combos. With that in mind, the fun part is obviously exploring the various possibilities and combinations for the combos. The simplicity of the concepts makes it clear that the experience is more casual, though there are also options for players who are fond of more intense challenges. Wizard of Legend is a fast-paced roguelike with an emphasis on dynamic magical combat. Quick movement and even quicker use of spells will allow you to chain spells together to unleash devastating combinations against your enemies. The game has enough spells and relics to keep you mixing and matching until you find that perfect combination. Even after you defeat the boss of the level, you still want to search the rest of the dungeon for possible upgrades to make you stronger overall which is risky because you can die so easily, but that's the gamble that you take in this game. If you are a fan of deck building card battlers with a dash of RPG, then Gordian Quest is the best of the bunch. While there are few tutorial elements and stability challenges to attend to, the endless replayability and randomization element makes every run unique. The combat is obviously the focus with Korean Quest and it's done well. Careful formation planning is key to mastering the battles and is absolutely crucial to boss fights. The story is a little basic, but it does just enough to move you on. This is the perfect game to just pick up and play to get your daily dose of DND. The concept of 20 minutes till dawn is simple. Survive until dawn, which comes in 20 minutes. The game offers many power-ups, a variety of characters, and multiple builds, which saves a lot of time for grinding and achievement hunting. Mechanics are a little bit hard to master since the controls are a bit finicky and the difficulty is quite unforgiving, but I would say it's manageable as long as you want to adapt to the learning curve. 
If you like challenging roguelike games that offer a fresh experience, 20 minutes till dawn is worth a shot. The last spell is a fast-paced tactical RPG with a roguelite structure in which you lead a group of warriors to defend the last bastion of humankind. The gameplay in the last spell draws heavily from roguelike games with the failure being expected more often than not, and every attempted run being unique to a rather large degree. The last spell is absolutely for hardcore gamers. The game is extremely punishing and has a quite steep learning curve. If you love a difficult yet rewarding kind of experience, this is the perfect game for you. Monster Train will feel familiar to fans of deck builders, particularly to the game that popularized the genre, Slay the Spire. But Monster Train feels less like a derivative and more of an evolution. It chose to combine two of five unique factions, which will allow you to earn cards and units from both. Not only that the five factions incredibly varied, but there are also several styles of play within each individual faction. The variety, strategy, and sheer joy of putting together crazy combos make for an addicting game. If you love Slay the Spire but want to elevate the experience, Monster Trains is a must-buy. Cult of the Lamb is a unique game in a world full of roguelikes. The game proves to be a remarkably fresh take on the roguelike genre not just in its goofy and creepy aesthetic, but also in its smart blending of action and base building management. The combat itself is also very simple, with just a main attack button, a dodge roll, and a magical attack. Each run represents you with a weapon and a magical ability at random, with the opportunity to find more as you explore further into the depths of each dungeon. There are also multiple difficulty options to choose from, making the game very accessible for everyone. Streets of Rogue is a roguelite about player choice, freedom, and anarchic fun. The game takes inspiration from fast-paced top-down roguelikes and adds free-form gameplay elements of RPGs. This generally tends to be followed by some instant and untimely deaths for the player, so don't expect to complete it on your first run. With around 20 playable characters, it's all about finding the best fit, collecting upgrades, and unlocking perks. This game is fun to play both solo or as a co-op. You can play the game doing the bonus objectives or just beat the game regularly, which adds optional difficulty. As an action RPG with dual stick controls, Hero Siege has your hero taking on a set wave of the enemies before a boss which allows you to move on to the next arena map. In fact, it kinda reminds you of Diablo, but with roguelite elements. Hero Siege also has a loot system. Loot drops can be of several different rarities such as Normal, Magic, Rare, Legendary, Mythic, and Satanic. The loot system gives you the opportunity to build your hero just the way you want. Not only that, this game offers up to 4 players online multiplayer, so you can enjoy this game with your friends. Turn-based strategy games are usually about killing enemies while surviving, but Into the Bridge treats each encounter as a puzzle. You can see every enemy's next move and your aim is to try and counter this with the fewest amount of casualties possible. This involves protecting buildings on your grid, surviving with your units, and sometimes protecting a specific point of interest on the level by taking damage or sacrificing things. This variety of side missions and unique events make the game unique and has high replayability, especially with random generation in each timeline you play. Noida is a game where every pixel is physically simulated. To support these features, the game focuses on the elemental aspects of gameplay. 
The combat is simple, but it's well done due to the great variety of different spell combinations and the great enemy variety. Not only that, the game also has a great modding community, expanding the interaction and immersion gameplay. All in all, Noida is definitely one of the best roguelite games that deserve your attention. Darkest Dungeon is without a doubt one of the best roguelike games of all time. And to think that Red Hook Studios trying to elevate that experience with its sequel is certainly not as easy as it looks. First of all, the improved graphics and animation are extremely satisfying to look at. The soundtrack and sound design also perfectly match the atmosphere. There are also some new mechanics that make the game feel fresh and have more depth. However, the stress system is a bit more overwhelming to handle, especially in the beginning. The newly introduced character interaction mechanic also needs some balancing and tweaks, because sometimes the negative effects feels too unfair. Despite all of that, the game is still in a very good direction and the progression system is actually very fun. Looking at its current state, I would say Darkest Dungeon 2 has the potential to repeat the same success, if not better. A slow dissection, an unavoidable end. Alright boys, I think that's it for today. Despite this video is the part 3 of the series, I know that there are still other roguelite games that I haven't mentioned yet. So how about sharing your best roguelite games that probably deserve a spot in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss another great list. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Peace.